She was the most beautiful and influential woman of the ancient world. Cleopatra won the love of the most powerful men of her time and made masses hate her abysmally. Her end was dramatic and the great queen's body was long thought to be lost. Have archaeologists finally found Cleopatra's tomb? And do the new clues shed light on what really happened in the last hours of the queen and her husband, Antony? Join us on this journey to one of the greatest unsolved mysteries of the ancient world. Cleopatra – Myth and Legend This much is certain, Cleopatra was already a superstar during her lifetime, and she has remained so to this day. More than 2,000 years, the once supposedly most beautiful and exotic woman of the ancient world is now dead and almost every child knows her name. Women to this day admire the loveliness of a woman of whom, strangely enough, not a single lifelike portrait exists. Cleopatra's beauty became a myth through the drama of her life and legends. Great artists dedicated entire paintings to the woman, described in the most colorful terms by Roman historians but these were all created long after her death. Cleopatra fascinated and fired the imaginations of millions of men and women to the present day. What was there really between her and the ruler of the Roman Empire, Julius Caesar? Did Cleopatra really bewitch him and his successor, Mark Antony, with her erotic aura, or was it all just political calculation? As much as this woman captivates people, she also divides them. Not a few scientists would like to deny the Queen of the Nile all the attributes for which she is still famous today. She is said to have been neither beautiful nor particularly clever, power-hungry, naive, and almost obsessed with dramatic self-dramatization. The guesswork around Cleopatra was fueled by certain circumstances. Her tomb has not been found until today. No corpse, no mummy, no grave goods, and no inscriptions by which we could reconstruct today better who this woman really was. But now, the last resting place of the Great Queen has been found in a temple city outside Alexandria. So, are we on the verge of solving the mystery? What do we know about Cleopatra's final moments? Plutarch, an ancient Greek writer, was one of the first to describe the final moments of Cleopatra's reign and burial next to her husband, the Roman general Marcus Antonius. According to his biography, Antony fell on his sword the day Augustus and his Roman troops conquered Egypt and Alexandria. Cleopatra was at his side when he breathed his last. She laid her husband to rest in her mausoleum. Two weeks after the death of her beloved, Cleopatra went to the tomb to make offerings to the just deceased and to invoke the spirits, soon after which she died too. How exactly the great queen of the Nile went out of life, Plutarch did not describe. The story of suicide by the bite of a cobra became a legend, and Hollywood also made use of this image. As a result, it has become a truth in the minds of many people. In fact, other variants of the story were handed down in Egyptian tales and in legends that spread around the Mediterranean. Thus, it could also be that Cleopatra was confronted and executed by Roman soldiers. Another story says that the once most beautiful woman in the world was poisoned either by an assassin, from her own ranks, or by Augustus. Plutarch tells of how her body was buried next to that of her husband in the mausoleum. In the following days, other tragedies occurred. Mark Anton's son, Marcus Antonius Antilius, and Ptolemy XV Caesar, the son of Julius Caesar, were both killed by the Roman troops. Most likely, the boys were also buried in the mausoleum of their parents, but this is not certain. For centuries, people searched for the tomb of the Great Queen to finally clarify the circumstances of her death. For decades, the tomb remained missing, as did her palace. The Fall of Alexandria Large parts of ancient Alexandria slid into the sea over the centuries. The Egyptian coastline was already fragile in ancient times, and earthquakes repeatedly caused parts to slide into the sea. For a long time, archaeologists assumed that Cleopatra's mausoleum had sunk into the sea. But in the present, divers explored Alexandria, which is now partially submerged in the Mediterranean Sea, and found at least the Queen's Palace. For Cleopatra connoisseurs, it was almost certain that the great queen and seductress of the most powerful men in the world had herself buried in a mausoleum near her beloved Temple of Isis. Cleopatra paid homage to Isis, the goddess of beauty and love, and saw herself as an incarnation of the deity. 
She had her magnificent palace built not far from the Temple of Isis so that she could easily reach the place of worship on foot and at all times of the day. Cleopatra's charm, her loveliness, and the view that eroticism and politics belong together are said to go back to the worship of the goddess Isis. In addition, the queen is also said to have been unusually educated. She was the first woman to be granted permission to study at some of the best schools in Alexandria, and she was given access to libraries that were otherwise only open to scholars and priests. For a long time, underwater archaeologists searched for a mausoleum located between the palace and the temple or in their vicinity, but they did not find a single clue. Cleopatra Connoisseur Finds Hot Lead in the present, no one knows the Queen of the Nile better than Dr. Kathleen Martinez. The South American scientists studied the life of Cleopatra intensively for years and used all available sources about the noble family of the Ptolemies. Dr. Martinez came across the fact that not a single tomb of the Ptolemaic kings of Egypt has ever been found. The Ptolemies were not in the tradition of the godlike pharaohs of ancient Egypt. They were not even true Egyptians, but came to the land on the Nile from Macedonia as successors to Alexander the Great. Martinez found that Cleopatra's father had a very close connection to the temple city of Taposiris Magna. She thought it quite possible that this place was also the secret burial place of the dynasty. For 17 years, Martinez and her team uncovered the temple complex of Taposiris Magna. 1,500 objects were found, including busts, gold pieces, statues, and an extensive collection of coins depicting Alexander the Great Queen Cleopatra, and the Ptolemies. Over 200 coins bearing Cleopatra's name and likeness were discovered at a temple altar where priests made offerings to the gods. The coins not only directly linked Cleopatra to Taposiris Magna, but also showed an impressive image of the queen. Strictly speaking, these coins and a bust that came from Rome are the only images of the queen. Malicious tongues rail that this woman could not have been so beautiful. On the coins, a rather unimpressive looking woman with a hooked nose can be seen, and also the bust looks a bit pale. Can this really have been the woman who, through her beauty and charm, wrapped two of the most powerful men of her time around her finger? Today, there are numerous approaches to reconstruct the true appearance of the queen based on the bone structure of the bust and the profile on the coins. It came out that the woman may well have been very attractive. When Cleopatra stayed in Rome for several years, some portraits are said to have been made. However, apart from her lover Julius Caesar, Cleopatra had few friends in Rome. The romance between the Egyptian queen and the married Caesar was not well received by the conservative senators and the Roman nobility was outraged. After Caesar's assassination, Cleopatra was expelled from the city and her effigies were most likely destroyed. Have Cleopatra and Mark Antony finally been found? It has long been clear to Kathleen Martinez that Cleopatra must be buried in the extensive catacombs beneath the temple city. The complex once included three temples, one of which was dedicated to Isis. The temples were located in a park-like setting with gardens and a sacred lake. Scans of the sub-Irish complexes of Taparosiris Magna revealed that 13 meters below the Earth's surface was a 1,305-meter-long tunnel system with several chambers, shafts, and levels. Behind a wall, the researchers suspected a cavity. After digging up, the researchers could see a small niche and two mummies. The scientists were on the right track. The underground facilities had really been used as burial chambers. The mummies were not in the best condition. Both were once covered with pure gold leaf, and only the rich and powerful could afford that. Penetrating water has severely damaged the mummies, but an X-ray examination revealed that they are a man and a woman. Could it be Cleopatra and Mark Antony? No, the experts do not believe so. The burial site was too austere for that. One of the mummies carries a very valuable golden scarab, which is the symbol of rebirth. Both of the dead could have been very high-ranking priests. So far, only a small part of the huge tunnel system has been explored. At the moment, experts believe that Cleopatra and Antony were buried much deeper in the passage system. Finds in the passages fit the era of Cleopatra. Martinez and her colleagues consider these pieces as further important clues in the great scavenger hunt. The search continues. Taposiris Magna 
is increasingly turning out to be a treasure trove of immeasurable value for researchers and Egyptologists. It is quite possible that this site, which has long received far too little attention, will finally fill in gaps in the history of the late epoch of ancient Egypt. The Egyptian Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities was once again announced that the construction and statics of the site alone once again prove how advanced Egyptian construction and architecture had been. The entire complex of Taposiris Magna is to be further uncovered and at some point made accessible to the public. If the tomb of Cleopatra is really hidden here, Taposiris may become a pilgrimage site for fans from all over the world. Cleopatra would certainly have enjoyed the hype surrounding her person, which continues to the present day. But can eternal fame beyond death really be a consolation for a life that was marked by great love, but also by drama and intrigue, loss and death far too early? In ancient Egypt, death was not considered the end of life but the beginning of a new life. Magical books served as guides to the underworld, and just such a book has now been recovered in Egypt. Older than any other book of the dead ever found, this scripture may reveal the secrets of life and death. The Book of Two Ways The oldest copy of the Book of Two Ways ever found is more than 4,000 years old. It was found recently during excavations near the Egyptian village of Dar el Barsh, in an almost intact burial site, Egyptologists were able to recover two weathered cedar slabs. The slabs were part of the coffin and served as magical incantations to offer the dead safe passage to the world of Osiris, the god of the dead. Writings like these cannot often be found in Egypt in such good condition. Too often, grave robbers were there before the researchers and these people steal everything that can be made into money. The Book of Two Ways are much more than just ancient writings. Very likely they were the first illustrated books in this history of mankind. The expense and rarity show how important the contents, some of which are difficult to understand today, were for the complex culture of the Egyptians. Some Egyptologists evaluate writings like these as helpless attempts by an ancient culture to deal with the issue of its own mortality. But for others, these magical formulas and rites are shrouded in mystery that has lost none of its explosive power more than 4,000 years later. The Egyptologist Rita Lucarelli explained in an interview that the ancient Egyptians were obsessed with life in all its forms. Of life, mind you, not of death. The impression of a culture that paid homage to death can arise, according to the Egyptologist, if people do not concern themselves intensely enough with the rights and beliefs of this culture. Death was not an end for the Egyptians, but a transition, and they had to be prepared for it if they did not want to get stuck in the labyrinths of the intermediate worlds or under the thumb of sinister demons after their death on this earth. This explains why a people put such incredible effort into a cult of the dead that we today find difficult to comprehend, even if we can imagine life after death or rebirth. Much more widespread in our time and culture is the view that after one's own death, there is nothing more. Only a great blackness, a nothingness, a disappearance forever. For an Egyptian, this idea would have been impossible 4,000 years ago. He would have thought you crazy if you had communicated this opinion to him and probably would have recommended to you to be advised by a capable magician in time before you even get into bigger problems after death, which you possibly already had on earth. Imagine once that your soul arrives after your physical death on earth into a realm in which you do not know your way. Somewhere there is the way, which brings you directly into the heavenly kingdom. But there are also ways that drive you deeper and deeper into the mess of the underworld and possibly your poor soul then wanders around for centuries without finding the way to Aru, the fantastic paradise of the Egyptians and the dwelling place of Osiris, the god of the dead. No Egyptian who could afford it would have let it go. The Book of Two Ways was something like a guarantee for a good time after death and the ticket to paradise. The tomb in which the oldest Book of the Two Ways has now been found belonged to the era of Pharaoh Manitoup II. At the time, there existed two variants of the guidebooks to the underworld, the Book of the Two Ways and the classical Book of the Dead. Today, the Book of the Two Ways is considered the precursor of the Book of the Dead. Egyptian books did not consist of bound pages as we know it today, but of tablets in which pictures and hieroglyphics were engraved. Often the tablets were firmly embedded in the coffin. 
According to Harko Willems, an Egyptologist at the University of Louvain in Belgium, such coffin texts were more than just guidebooks. A magic of its own emanated from the characters, which was intended to transport the deceased, or rather his soul, into the world of the gods. Ankh's way to the heavenly realm of the dead Aru. The sarcophagus and the writing belong to a high-ranking woman named Ankh. However, the instructions for the afterlife are written in the he form. In Egypt, people were convinced that the celestial realm and rebirth were purely male affairs, and so women had to be masculinized to get closer to Osiris, the macho world of the dead. Aru, the heavenly paradise of the Egyptians, was described as a place of joy, peace, and happiness. Only those souls could find entrance who had passed a successful test in the afterlife. There were at least two ways to get to Aru, one by land and one by sea. Both were challenging, and in Egyptian belief, it was not believed that an ill-informed soul could accomplish this alone. So people prepared in time for this important journey. The books of the dead could be personalized. Very likely, clairvoyants or priests foresaw during their lifetime what traps the deceased could expect in the afterlife. In the case of the dead Ankh, the writing indicated that the deceased would encounter an obstacle in the form of a ring of fire early in her journey to the afterlife. Evil spirits, demons, and even earthly threats that haunted the woman in the afterlife were described in detail. At the same time, whoever had created the Book of Two Ways for Ankh had the appropriate spell ready and written on the tablets as well. The maps in this book and other similar books are a confusing jumble of twisted lines and ominous figures. In modern times, it is almost impossible to decipher what people 4,000 years ago wanted to express with them. The spells and incantations were easier for Egyptologists to recognize than the references to the variety of dangers in the afterlife. Probably already during Ankh's lifetime, or in the course of her burial, magical rituals were performed to clear the obstacles on the way to Aru. Thus accompanied by priests and mages, the soul could at best travel its way safely and purposefully. Most historians agree that the earliest forms of writing appeared in the Mediterranean region about 5,000 years ago. Thanks to the discovery of the countless very old books in recent years, we now know what was so important to people that they wrote it down. The path from life through death, the underworld to the kingdom of heaven, was obviously one of those very things that absolutely had to be recorded. In our own Christian tradition, we have similar ideas. Even though the belief in heaven and hell has been largely lost today, these worldviews had a long tradition. The Muslims also know a paradise after death, and also in all Eastern religions, the death of man is by no means the end. Until today, however, all scientific proofs for the existence of an immortal soul or of worlds into which we can enter after the physical death are missing. What must not mean, however, that these do not exist. Another explosive hint. Another fascinating book has allegedly been discovered in Egypt, written in a language that cannot be translated. Photos have been posted on the internet in the hope that someone might be able to translate the text or provide important background information. Allegedly, the book was discovered on the Giza Plateau, and later it ended up in the hands of a black market trader. Some interesting feedback was of the opinion that this book contained magical incantations that enabled the reader to communicate with a higher power. Egyptian civilization is one of the oldest in human history, and this people achieved unusual achievements in art, medicine, construction, and certainly in mysticism and religion. Many of the things seem strange to us today. The world of gods of these people, of these epochs, has been replaced by the one god faith of the great world religions. The belief in magic and sorcery also seems strange or even crazy to us today. For Egyptians, on the other hand, it was impossible to live without the presence and benevolence of their gods. On the title of this enigmatic book, you can see the Eye of Horus. This symbol has been the center of many investigations and still today offers much room for speculation. Is again the center of the investigations and speculations today. If one puts the Eye of Horus on the illustration of a human brain, amazing correspondences become visible. The symbol shows, among other things, the pineal gland, as well as other parts of the brain, which Indian yogis or monks of the Himalayas described as the centers of the magical seeing and communication with higher dimensions. 
This symbol also conceals a series of numbers that has been associated with magic and sorcery since ancient times. Of course, the authenticity of the book has often been doubted because it has not been studied by scientists. However, considering that it is most likely black market goods, it becomes clear why we should not expect a scientific treatise, but have to form our own opinion. The Book of the Dead of the Egyptians Far better known than the Book of the Two Ways is the Egyptian Book of the Dead, which became almost a standard in Egyptian culture in later eras. Only selected people were supposedly able to create these books, reproduce them, and sell them for a lot of money. Many Egyptians saved all his money during his lifetime only to be able to afford a Book of the Dead and thus hopefully have better cards in the future, in the afterlife, and in rebirth. This reminds a bit of the Christian sale of indulgences, and many references seem to confirm exactly that. The cult with the books of the dead is increasingly described in later eras as a business with fear that has degenerated into a hoax. Resourceful priests or self-proclaimed magicians could earn good money with the books, and just as today, there were all kinds of fraud and superstition in those times. Nevertheless, the belief of these people in their books of the dead is fascinating. The largest and longest book of the dead ever found belonged to a queen named Nirit. The wife of Pharaoh Teti of the 6th dynasty, completely unknown until the discovery of her tomb, had taken a 4 meter long papyrus with her to her tomb. As with the Book of Two Ways, the writing describes the queen's path to the legendary realm of Osiris. What archaeologists excavate every day around the world is not always pleasing, beautiful, or fascinating. Many finds raise questions and lead scientists into almost unresolvable controversies. Why are things repeatedly found that do not fit the apparent time or error? Where do finds come from that simply cannot be explained? And how did primitive people know things about the future of the Earth? Gate of the Gods in 1996, a tour guide named Jose Luis Delgado Mamani stumbled upon a strange structure known as the Amarumuru, or the Gate of the Gods, near Lake Titicaca. Since its discovery, there has been controversy over the construction and use of the gate. For four millennia, the area surrounding the mountains and Lake Titicaca was home to several ancient indigenous communities, including the Inca civilization ruled by Pacachori Inca Apawaki. The Inca believed that Lake Titicaca was the place where the world began and where the spirit would go after death. It is also believed that the site of Aramururu served as a pilgrimage site and place of worship for the Inca. Stories also come from the Incas that the door has supernatural powers. The structure is 7 meters high and 7 meters wide, with a smaller door-shaped depression in the center. Who built the portal of Aramururu? and whether this door is truly magical remains a mystery to this day. It leads nowhere, and even skins of the rock have not revealed any cavities or chambers behind it. Tomb of Jesus Jesus is said to have been crucified at the gates of Jerusalem about 2,000 years ago. However, his tomb was never found. Grave would be perhaps also not completely correct because Jesus is to have risen some days after his death and traveled then to his Father, God, in the sky. However, for some time Jesus lay in a burial chamber, and this is exactly what believers, crusaders, and modern archaeologists have been looking for for centuries. A fierce dispute has broken out among scientists about the tomb of Jesus. Some believe it to be under the Holy Cross Burial Church in Jerusalem. Others have found evidence in stone mounds outside the gates of the city and still others claim that the tomb was located in Golgotha. For all these theories, there is evidence and perhaps even proof. This fact makes it extremely difficult to find the true burial place of Jesus Christ. Young Buddha After Jesus, we have the next founder of a world religion. The man who became known as Buddha was not a saint, nor did he call himself a deity. Buddha attained enlightenment as an ordinary man and thus became a founder of a new religion. 
In 2018, two filmmakers accidentally found an extremely unusual figure in Australia that shows Buddha as a child. The statue dates back to the Chinese Ming Dynasty and was recovered from an ancient site. But how does a child Buddha from China end up at an archaeological site in Australia? Many believe it was a hoax after the find became known. But the 15-centimeter baby Buddha is believed to be real and could be an indication of contacts between Australia and China that were previously unknown. Archahenton's Medallion Pharaoh Archahenton was one of the most powerful rulers of Egypt during his lifetime. Archahenton became a legend and was contentious even during his reign. Many considered him mad because he had deprived the Egyptians of their previous main deity and put a new god in first place. The father of Tutankhamun and the husband of the beautiful Queen Nefertiti still divides today. Scientists found a medallion of the man which shows him in a strange, almost feminine form. Several strange depictions of Akhenaten exist, so it has often been speculated that this pharaoh may have been of non-terrestrial origin. Akhenaten's head was strangely large and his face very long. Evidence for the alien theory is said to be found on other images, reliefs, and medals. Strangely enough, many of these findings have disappeared over time and can no longer be found. Antikythera Mechanism In 1900, a group of Greek divers from the eastern Mediterranean island of Simi were searching for natural sponges when their course was disturbed by a violent storm. They had to take shelter from the storm near the island of Antikythera between Crete and the Greek mainland. When the storm subsided, they dove for sponges and came across a shipwreck full of Greek treasures. Along with gold, silver, and artifacts, one object came to light that still divides scholars today. The Antikythera mechanism is about 2,000 years old, and gear technology officially surfaced much later. Further research revealed that the mechanism is a complex calendar, and it is the only find of its kind in the world. Footprints on Crete German professor Gerard D. Gerlinski discovered 50 footprints on the Greek resort island of Crete that changed the prevailing understanding of human evolution. In fact, these footprints are 5.7 million years old and date back to the Miocene era. After the discovery, some scientists claim that the footprints were not made by humans. In fact, the footprints don't look completely human, but that could be the result of weathering processes, and if they're not human, who are they from? Modern humans are believed to have appeared on Crete only about 300,000 years ago, and the find turns all previous knowledge of human migrations in the Mediterranean upside down. Tataria Tablets The Tataria Tablets were discovered in 1961 by archaeologist Nicolae Viesa at the Neolithic site in the village of Tartaria in Romania. The three tablets are only a few centimeters in size and show symbols similar to the Greek alphabet. The tablets were found in a kiln that has been dated to 2700 BC. This means that these findings are older than the Sumerian script, which was previously considered the oldest known script in the world. Some experts believe that the Tartaria tablets are the oldest writing in the world. Others believe that the symbols on the tablets are not writing, but only decorations. The debate about whether the Tartaria tablets are the oldest writing in the world is still going on at the moment. Nefertiti Queen Nefertiti is now considered one of the most beautiful women of antiquity. Her bust has become a legend. On December 6, 1912, a group of archaeologists stumbled upon the workshop of the ancient sculptor Thutmosis during excavations in Amarna. There they discovered the limestone bust of Nefertiti. Although there are no identifying inscriptions on the bust, the crown on the bust is the one known to have been worn by Nefertiti. In 1924, a controversy broke out among Egyptologists, with some claiming that the bust was a modern forgery. In the present, CT scans of the bust were performed, which showed that the sculpture has a limestone core covered by a layer of plaster stucco. The scan also showed that the face was carved, with bags under the eyes, wrinkles around the mouth and cheeks, and a swelling on the nose visible. Later, a painting was added over it, depicting the queen in almost perfect beauty. Despite the new findings, the authenticity of the bust could never be proven 100%. 
Evolution of the Animal World Have you ever wondered how animals actually evolved in this world? Life began about 4.5 billion years ago and for billions of years it consisted only of bacteria. A few hundred million years ago, evolutionary events set in and life forms such as mollusks and crabs formed. The oldest finding of animals with hard parts were made over 500 million years ago. How the animals with hard parts developed cannot be proven in the evolutionary chain until today. However, it is generally believed that sponges are the simplest animal in the animal phylogenetic tree and that parts such as bones, cartilage, vertebrae, or shells formed later. Sponges may have existed 900 million years ago and in some ways are the ancestors of us humans. Lost Chamber in the Pyramid Since the discovery of the pyramid, no one knows exactly how they got there or who built them. Even though the theory of the tomb was valid for a long time, mummies or kings or burial objects were never discovered in the structure. Some evidence states that the pyramids of Giza are far older than the Egyptian culture. In a scan that uses tiny particles from space, Egyptologists have found another, previously secret and bricked up chamber in the Great Pyramid of Egypt. The chamber measures about 30 meters and is located above what was once the main entrance. Further scans are currently underway to determine if there are other unknown rooms and passages in the pyramids. James Ossery an ossuary is a container or room where the bones of deceased people are kept. In 2002, the ossuary of James, the brother of Jesus, was said to have been found. The James ossuary is a limestone bone box that on it bears an Aramaic inscription, James, son of Joseph, brother of Jesus. In 2012, it was reportedly revealed that an Israeli antiquities collector named Odin Golan had forged the box. For seven years, the man stood trial and was finally acquitted in 2019. That was not the end of the controversial find. The ossuary could be dated to the era between the 1st century BC and 70 AD. However, the question of whether the inscription, Brother of Jesus, is genuine or a forgery, cannot be resolved to this day. Mayan Calendar the Mayan calendar drove everyone crazy in 2012, claiming that the end of the world would come this year. It's 2023 and the world has apparently survived the Mayan apocalypse. Nevertheless, the calendar of the ancient Mayan culture still fascinates and divides. With an 819-day rhythm, the calendar is based on complex planetary movements that today's astronomers can only marvel at. Only one cycle, stretching 40 years, agrees with today's planetary knowledge. How the Maya came up with the other numbers is not comprehensible. Some claim that the Maya measured time not only with the planets visible at that time, but included extraterrestrial worlds in their calendar. Decalogue Stone The Los Lunas Decalogue Stone was discovered in the 1880s by archaeologist Frank Hibben. It was found southwest of Albuquerque, New Mexico. In 1985, George Morehouse, a mineralogist and member of the Epigraphic Society, examined the stone and said it was 500 to 2,000 years old. The stone bears an inscription that has sparked controversy. The Decalogue stone is said to pretty much reflect the wording of the Ten Commandments, which are described in the Bible. But how did the Ten Commandments come to Mexico? When first contacts with this continent are said to have occurred only from the epoch of Columbus. Skull This skull is undoubtedly one of the most controversial finds of the last decades. Researchers first found the complete lower jaw of a fossil human five years later than the remains of the head appeared in 2000 and have been causing confusion ever since. The skull was found in an excavation site about 150 kilometers southwest of Tbilisi, Georgia. The skull's face, large teeth, and small brain size resemble those of earlier fossil humans, but the anatomy of the brain box raises questions. All attempts to explain the strange shape by relationships to early human species such as Homo erectus or Homo gajorius failed, and so the skull must remain a mystery of modern archaeology. 
Humans have lived on Earth for over 20,000 years, but sometimes we make discoveries of our home planet that makes us wonder if we recently arrived here on a spaceship. In every discipline in both science and arts, we learn that the Earth is a universe to itself and we might never be able to truly fathom its true depths. One of those disciplines that makes our jaws drop is archaeology, one of the few means through which we travel to the past. Pit 157 Neolithic communities were once thought to be peaceful societies structured on an egalitarian ruling system. In these societies, the oldest ruled the tribe and natives were usually farmers. Recent research has brought new material to light which shows that brutal violence may have been more common than we think. A good case is the grave of seven Neolithic people buried atop severed limbs. Dubbed Pit 157, the grave site was discovered in Bergheim, France by archaeologists from Antia Archaeology in Habsheim and their colleagues at Bordeaux and Strasbourg Universities. Carbon dating placed the seven skeletons found at 5,500 to 6,000 years old. Experts mark the skeletons to belong to two men, a woman, and four children, all of whom are probably part of a single family. The unfortunate family was most likely victims of a brutal raid and were tortured before being killed. Beneath their skeletons were severed left arms, although none of theirs were hacked off with the exception of a man. Experts believe the hands were taken as war trophies by the savage attackers. It could have been cut off to serve as a warning to others or as an act of brutal violence or both. Whichever way, 6,000 years ago, life was not all rosy. Mass Baby Graves in 1988, archaeologist Ross Voss made a gruesome discovery underneath a 4th century Roman bathhouse in Ashkelon, southern Israel. He initially thought it was chicken bones he had found in the sewers, but he was wrong. He had just excavated the largest discovery of infant remains in history. In the sewers of the bathhouse were the skeletal remains of over a hundred babies from the Roman era. Further investigation showed that none of the infants were more than a week old when they died, and worse, they were intentionally killed. Roman folklore tells of the war god Mars abandoning his two sons, Romulus and Remus, in the woods. The boys were raised by wolves and went on to found Rome itself. Taking root from this founding story is the ancient Roman tradition that allows babies to be abandoned with the belief that the gods would determine their fate. Due to the unwholesome sight of this discovery, it is possible that the babies were born to prostitutes and laborers working at the brothel. With the absence of contraceptives in that time, infanticide seemed like the best option. I have never felt more grateful for condoms. Children of Luliaco the ancient Inca ritual of Capachoa left us with perhaps the best preserved mummies ever discovered and a reminder of one of the most bloodthirsty errors in history. Discovered in 1999 by a team of archaeologists led by Johann Reinhard, the three mummies were sacrificed just below the summit of Luleiko, a stratovolcano in the Argentina-Chile border. All three mummies were those of children nicknamed Luleiko Maiden, Luleiko Boy, and Lightning Girl. Examination of the discovery revealed that the ritual took place in the year 1500. The children went through a year of ceremonial preparations before they were led to their death. The preparations included the intake of coca and alcohol, meaning the children were drugged before being left beneath the ground to die. Due to the cold conditions at 21,110 feet summit of the mountain, the mummies were very well preserved. In fact, the Luleko maiden looks like she had just fallen into a peaceful sleep. Headless Vikings Burial Pit from religious rituals, we move to the more gruesome death of 54 Vikings found in Weymouth, a seaside town in Dorset, England. In 2009, while doing excavations in preparation for the Weymouth Relief Road Project ahead of the 2012 Summer Olympic sailing events, archaeologists uncovered a Roman quarry that served as the burial site of 54 skeletons and 51 skulls. Forensics found Scandinavian origins, revealing the remains to be Vikings. Although carbon dating is yet to be confirmed, experts believe the remains are from way back as between 5th and 10th centuries, the early Middle Ages. There are speculations to why the Vikings were murdered. Some believe they attempted a raid on Anglo-Saxon soil and were captured and killed in a show of power. Others believe they may have been defectors and were killed by their own men. Neanderthal Cannibal Attack Neanderthals are among the earliest modern humans and lived in small family groups of 10 to 12 individuals. The family unit was quite able of taking care of itself and unlike other human species, Neanderthals did not work with other families as a group. During the winter when food was scarce, their exclusivity became and cannibalism was not rare. In the El Cidron cave system in Spain, archaeologists discovered remains of a Neanderthal family of 12 slaughtered by a neighboring family and eaten raw. 
The discovery was made in 1994, and forensic examinations show the remains have been preserved for 49,000 years. The family consisted of three males, three females, and five children, including an infant. Their attackers had killed them for food as examiners found split bones and skulls, cracks made to extract tongues, brains, and marrows. It had been a gory feast, and the bones were buried during a cave collapse. Jigsaw Skeletons the discovery of prehistoric skeletons in 2001 on the island of South Uist in Scotland's Outer Hebrides sparked academic interest. It was the first case of deliberate mummification in Britain and initiated research into other discovery remains to know if other cases exist. Further investigation revealed more intriguing secrets. The skeletons were composites of different individuals. Excavated by archaeologists from the University of Sheffield, the grave contained the mummy corpse of a male, a three-month-old child, a female in her 40s, and a younger female. The discovery was made in the prehistoric village of Klath Halan, with the remains found underneath roadhouses dating to the Bronze Age. Carbon dating the remains showed the individuals died 300 and 500 years before the roundhouses were even built. Male skeleton is composed of three males. The head and neck belongs to one man, the jaw to the second, and the body to the last. The female remains were no different, with the jawbone, skull, arm, and leg from different people. If the day of the dead ever comes, we can expect to see Frankenstein. Decapitated Gladiators Ancient Anglo-Saxons might just have a thing for decapitation. In York, England, archaeologists discovered a burial site that contained more than 80 skeletons, all with their heads cut off. First skeletons were uncovered in 2003 at Driftfield Terrace Gardens, which lie on the outskirts of the Roman city. The remains were dated to the 2nd and 3rd centuries, and none of the men killed were above 45 years of age. The headless gladiators had their heads tucked between their legs, at their feet, or placed on their chest. There are also remains of animal bones that show that the men were buried with some burial rites done. Why do experts believe the men were gladiators? The beheading says much in that respect. Beside that, the bones are generally heftier, and an arm is usually quite bigger than the other showing more use. The headless men were hulks, reaching 5 feet 7 inches or 5 feet 8 inches, and weighing as much as 175 pounds, and ridges found on their bones show that they were very muscular, as muscular people tend to have ridges on their bones. There were also animal teeth marks suggesting encounters with lions or tigers, typical arena entertainment. Thank God for the Super Bowl! 18th Century Cemetery People find a lot of odd things in their new homes, but few discoveries beat an 18th century cemetery. This is exactly what Vincent Marcello finds when he digs up his backyard in preparation for a swimming pool. Vincent lives in the French Quarter, New Orleans, which is a historic town in its own right. In 2011, he paid workers to dig up his backyard and found 13 caskets stacked on top of each other. It was a discovery that required professional expertise, so he called in Ryan Gray, an archaeologist from the University of New Orleans. Gray revealed that the cemetery was no other than St. Peter's Cemetery, which dates back to the 1700s. The cemetery was closed down due to overcrowding, as old remains were dug up when new corpses had to be buried. It is not the first time bodies have been dug up in the French Quarter. In 1984, 36 corpses were found during the construction of an apartment complex. No doubt, the French Quarter is a bad place to be in during a zombie apocalypse. Missing Skier Gregory Barnes the recovery of Gregory Barnes's body, a Canadian skier, brought much-needed closure to his sister, Sonia Barnes. His body was found in 2015, 35 years after he went missing while skiing on the Italian and Swiss Alps. For Sonia, she could finally have peace. Neither prehistoric nor gruesome like the other discoveries on the list, finding Gregory's missing corpse after three decades is more peaceful than disheartening. The 24-year-old skier had gone skiing in 1980 after spending a week with his sister in Ottawa. He had been skiing with a group, heading towards the Bernier mountain range, when he had to return to his hut to fix a binding on his ski. Afterwards, he tried to catch up with his group, but took a wrong turn and fell into a deep crevasse, where he died. The search for his body was in vain because it was covered by glacier. However, the area saw the warmest temperature in years in September 2015, and the ice melted to reveal his body, which still had his passport for identification. His body was buried in Canada weeks later. Aldous Vampire Graves Before Christianity and the Teutonic Knights ransacking, Aldous was an important Polish town. It had a cemetery called Hulman, 
which is a Latin name for burial grounds. In Kulmen, the first Caldus dead were buried in the 10th century. Excavations of the cemetery conducted in 2007 by an archaeological team from Nicholas Copernicus University in Turin discovered 14 remains buried using anti-vampire techniques such as staking, decapitating, and burying face down. A popular image of the remains show two 11th century skeletons, a man and a woman, decapitated and buried at odd angles. Some of their bones were also crushed using large stones. All these were done to prevent them from rising from the dead. Analysis of the uncovered skeletons show that most of the individuals were sick, which would explain why they were believed to be vampires. Porphyria causes light sensitivity, and tuberculosis gives a parched pallor, characteristics that would make tongues wag and torches light in a town that truly feared the wrath of Dracula before the book was even written. Lake Turkana Corpses, Kenya Hiroshima and Nagasaki remain the deadliest war attacks in history, but some incidents may just be more brutal and prehistoric. 10,000 years ago, in the much larger shores of Lake Turkana, situated in modern-day Nataruk, Kenya, 27 members of a hunter-gatherer group were massacred by another rival group. During excavation of the Lake Turkana area in 2012, archaeologist Dr. Martha Lahr discovered 27 skeletons bearing battle wounds that told of their violent end. 20 of the remains found belonged to adults, one was a teenager, and six were children. One man had his knee shattered with a club and was hit twice in the head with an arrow. Two other adults had stone projectiles embedded on their skull and thorax. The position of a female showed she had her feet and hands bound and was pregnant with the remains of her fetus found with her. The discovery, which was published in Nature Journal, is perhaps the earliest evidence of prehistoric warfare. Man of Sligo when a 200-year-old beech tree in Kaluni County, Slago, was blown down during a storm, no one expected what they found underneath, a 1,000-year-old murder mystery. Embedded in the tree's root system was the upper half of a skeleton, while the lower half remained in the soil. Forensics done by archaeological services revealed that the remains belonged to a man between 17 to 25 years. He died of several blade wounds, but whether it was from battle or simple dispute could not be known. The man of Sligo was carbon dated to have died in 1300 and 1200 AD. The remains are currently housed in the National Museum of Ireland. The Iceman One can only imagine the terror of German tourist Erika Simon on 19th September 1991 when she and her husband Helmut found a mummy sticking out of the glacier in the Ostapol Alps while hiking. They initially thought it was the remains of a deceased mountaineer, but days later they would find out it was a 5,000-year-old natural mummy. Nicknamed Otzi because of the place it was found, the Iceman is the oldest natural mummy of a Copper Age European man. He is believed to have lived between 3350 and 3105 BC. An arrowhead found in his left shoulder has brought up the conclusion that he was murdered. The Iceman is older than the Egyptian pyramids and Stonehenge. Preserved along with his body in the ice were Copper Age tools and clothing which have imparted knowledge in modern-day archaeology. Durham Mass Graves Excavations for a new cafe in Durham University led to the solving of a 365-year-old mystery. The excavation unearthed two mass graves containing the remains of men identified as Scottish soldiers captured by Oliver Cromwell in the bloody Battle of Dunbar. The Battle of Dunbar was one of the bloodiest battles of the English Civil War, and among the shortest. It lasted for less than an hour as Cromwell's superior army met the Scottish Covenanters who were supporters of Charles II. Cromwell's army defeated their foes and took them prisoners. However, thousands of Scottish soldiers died in the 100-mile march from Scotland to England, but their bodies were not found. The mass graves solved this mystery. About 1,700 prisoners died in the march and archaeologists believe they were buried in mass graves and buildings in Durham University may be built right over them. Shackled Skeletons in Phaleron In the Greek port city of Phaleron, four miles from Athens, 80 skeletons were unearthed with 36 of them bound together in chains. They were all buried in a single line, and researchers believe they may have been followers of Cylon, an Olympic champion that led the ill-fated coup of Cylon in 632 BC. Cylon was an Olympic athlete whose athletic prowess earned him a high place in society and marriage to the daughter of the tyrant of nearby Megara. In 632 BC, assisted by his father-in-law's soldiers, he began a coup, hoping the Athenians would join him, but most did not. The coup failed, and his followers sheltered in the Acropolis. Starvation eventually set in, and they were deceived into leaving the temple and summarily slaughtered. 
There are disputes over whether the remains belong to Cylons, rebels, or not. Critics say there are several reasons the men would have been buried in shackles since as 17th century BC was a tumultuous time in Athens. Whether right or wrong, being buried in shackles is definitely an inhumane way to die. The past tells all sorts of tales, tales of wonder, bravery, love, and death. In each bone underneath the earth and in each monument above is a reminder of days past filled with both rights and wrongs. Digging deep into the earth and into the past does not always guarantee an Egyptian pyramid. Sometimes we may have to look right into the eyes of the evil in human nature, finding the scariest archaeological discoveries that would shock the world. Steroid Brains between 2.6 million and 11,700 years ago, the average human brain expanded from 40 cubic centimeters, 655 milliliters, to 92 cubic inches, 1,507 milliliters. This level of development was so fast compared to other creatures on Earth that it seems as if humans that existed in that period were on brain steroids. But as scientists have explained, they were not on steroids. Rather, their brains were adapting to their lifestyles. According to scientists working with Tel Aviv University, the explosion in the size of human brains is due to our hunting style. The earliest humans hunted down all the big animals like bison and elephants, which would have provided lots of meat and fat, not to mention leather for the cold. But the more they hunted, and these creatures came close to extinction, they had to start hunting smaller, faster animals. As a result, they needed to become smarter to capture their prey. So, their brains expanded to give them more brain power. But now that humans have turned to agriculture, we have lost some of that brain mass, leaving us with 80 cubic inches, 1310 milliliters. The Pharaoh's Medallion Egypt is never short of historical bits and pieces that give us a clearer insight into how life was before us. One of the recently discovered bits from history from Egypt is a mysterious Pharaoh's Medallion that is said to have belonged to the great ruler Akhenaten. For those who are familiar with Egyptology, Pharaoh Akhenaten needs no introduction. For the uninitiated, Pharaoh Akhenaten is known in the history books as King Tut's father, but he is most famous for his religious reforms. He changed Egypt's religion to worship one god, the sun. The discovered medallion that allegedly belongs to Pharaoh Akhenaten is so mysterious that it seems to depict the pharaoh being ruled by aliens. Sitting at the center of the medallion is an image that appears to be a UFO, complete with a sort of oblong-headed alien overlord at the top, and at the bottom, other pharaohs and gods like Ra and Anubis. These depictions on the medallion suggest that the ancient Egyptians knew about aliens and maybe even worshipped them. If this is true, it would lend some credibility to the theory that aliens assisted the Egyptians in building their pyramids and other amazing structures. Could this also mean that aliens had considerable influence over other civilizations and cultures? In any case, this discovery is controversial because, interestingly, nobody knows if the medallion exists. Did Pharaoh Akhenaten commission this medallion? In many modern and ancient works of art, the pharaoh was depicted rather strangely. Spindly arms and legs, a protruding belly, a large oblong head with big almond eyes. Consequently, there have been some speculation that Pharaoh Akhenaten was an alien. Unfortunately, nobody knows where the medallion is, who discovered it, if it even actually exists, or if it's just a hoax perpetuated by pseudo-archaeologists. What we do know is that it appears as though Pharaoh Akhenaten had a sort of genetic mutation that caused his brain to grow far larger than normal, resulting in his head shape. However, with his looks, strange DNA, and odd behavior, Pharaoh Akhenaten is quite the enigma. The Decalogue Stone Deep in the desert of New Mexico, a mysterious stone has been discovered bearing inscriptions that some claim is in an extinct language. Language experts have been unable to agree on the meaning of the inscriptions. Some claim it is a recording of the Ten Commandments in Paleo-Hebrew, while others claim it is a report in Cypriotic Greek from a warrior from the Mediterranean named Zekaneros, who is lost in the wilderness and is trying to survive. Which speculation is right? We may never know. Fetus Memories Nobody can remember things that happened back in the good old days when they were in the womb, but recent scientific studies have shown that fetuses do have memories. According to Live Science, scientists tested the fetuses in 100 pregnant women's wombs in an attempt to figure out what age memory starts and how long it lasts. They subjected the fetuses to vibroacoustic stimulation, a very low sound that causes vibration, and observed the fetuses' reactions through ultrasound machines. They discovered that although the fetuses reacted uncomfortably to the sound initially, they eventually got used to it after hearing it over and over. They 
concluded that 30-week-old fetuses can remember things for a full 10 minutes, and at 34 weeks, their memories last up to 4 weeks. Monsters on Crate There have been countless depictions of monsters in books, movies, and art over the years, but we don't know of real monsters that once existed on Earth. That is, until now. On the Greek island of Crete, archaeologists have discovered strange footprints that hint at the existence of humanoid creatures roaming around the island some six million years ago. At first glance, the footprints looked like a regular human footprint, but scientists examining these fossilized footprints were shocked to discover that although the footprints looked strikingly similar to ours, they didn't quite fit with what we know a pair of human feet to be. The footprints were made by a creature walking on two feet, with one big toe and three smaller toes, less number of toes than a human should have, and a heel on the other side. Carbon dating traced the footprints back to 5.6 million years, which doesn't make sense at all. The cradle of humanity is supposed to be Ethiopia. So, did human-like creatures make it out of Africa all the way to Greece before exploring other parts of the world? If yes, this completely changes everything we know about history. Also, consider that we don't know what the creature is. Was it an ape? A primitive humanoid? Dinosaur? Lizard-human hybrid? We may never know. Horses and Man who were the first people to start riding horses? A new archaeological discovery from Kazakhstan might give us some insight. A tomb from the Bronze Age found in a cemetery on the banks of the Tobol River, hidden in the Eurasian steppes. The Pedrakov people, also known as the Andronovo culture, were the inhabitants of Kazakhstan between 1890 and 1774 BC, when these horses are believed to have been buried. The horses' remains showed signs that they were bred specifically for riding. This causes some confusion because, before the discovery, the earliest evidence of horse breeding goes back to 2000 BC, which is 100 years before the horses were buried. The Origin of Noodles When you are slurping down a big bowl of noodles, the last thing on your mind is probably which country noodles originated from. But you might be surprised to learn that there is a lot of controversy surrounding the question, where did the first noodle come from? In 2005, the scientific Nature magazine announced that the remains of noodles were found in a Neolithic archaeological site in China. The news sparked a fierce debate between the Chinese, the Italians, and the Arabs over who made the first strand of noodles. As you can probably guess, the Chinese won the argument. The first noodle has been traced to a site called Lihai in China, which has been compared to Pompeii in Italy. The famous ancient city of Lahai became abandoned after a brutal earthquake and a flash flood, which preserved the city almost perfectly. Excavations in the early 2000s unearthed noodle strands dating back to 2000 BC. The noodles appeared to have been created using a technique called Lamian, which involves stretching each strand by hand, which is still being used in China today. Skull 5 Scientists have discovered human remains that could rewrite human evolution as we know it. The discovery is called Skull 5, and it dates back 1.8 million years. Scientists discovered that this skull could mean that all the old distinct species of humans like Homo habilis, Homo erectus, and Homo floresiensis have come from a single lineage. So they were not different species. They only looked different depending on where in the world they lived, what they ate, and how quickly they evolved. Scientists didn't discover this earlier, probably because they had different bone structures. But according to the scientists who made this discovery, they are all of the same species that originated in Africa. The Bust of Nefertiti The Bust of Nefertiti is a painted statue of Pharaoh Akhenaten's royal wife. The bust is believed to have been carved in 1345 BC by Thutmose, the legendary Egyptian craftsman, because it was found in his workshop. The bust of Nefertiti is now the most replicated piece of work from ancient Egypt and has made Nefertiti one of the most famous women in history. It has resided in Berlin, Germany, since a team of German archaeologists led by Ludwig Burchard discovered it in 1912. The reason why it is so controversial is that Egypt has been trying to get it back for over a decade now, but Germany has refused to give it back because of some bizarre protocol. The German excavator who discovered it signed some deal with the Egyptian Antiquities Services at the time, so it technically belongs to the Germans. But 100 years have passed, so shouldn't Germany return it now? Also, the Egyptians probably would not have signed the deal if they had known that it was the bust of Nefertiti, which no one knew at the time. Horned Human Skull 
In a borough called Sayer in Bradford County, Pennsylvania, archaeologists discovered a huge burial mound containing several strange human remains. The skeletons looked like regular male skeletons except their skulls had horns and they were like giants over seven feet tall. Many people claim this discovery is a hoax, while others attribute it to extraterrestrial origin. However, this is not the only time such a discovery is being made. Similar skulls have been discovered near Wellsville, New York, and in a mining village close to El Paso, Texas. Throughout history, horned humans have been used as a sign of authority and power, like Alexander the Great, who was depicted with horns on some of his coins. So, maybe horned humans did exist at some point. Pluto's Secret Pluto is controversial for many reasons, starting with its discovery 90 years ago and its eventual removal from the lists of planets. But why is Pluto so controversial? Let's find out. Pluto was originally discovered by Clyde Tombaugh. In 2003, researchers found a slightly larger planet than Pluto beyond Neptune in a region spotted with trillions of small icy rocks. Here's where it gets interesting. On the one hand, the International Astronomical Union reclassified Pluto as a dwarf planet, which is technically not a planet like Earth or Mars. On the other hand, many planetary scientists still believe Pluto is a planet, and Pluto has moons like any other planet. The only thing is that it's located on the edge of the solar system, in an area with billions of similarly sized chunks of rock. So, scientists had to pick a side, and to do that, they had to define what differentiates a planet from a piece of rock. Half of the scientists decided Pluto was too small to be a proper planet, while the other half stuck to the belief that Pluto is still a planet. Animal Evolution the big question many scientists have struggled to answer is, when did animals as we know them just start appearing on Earth? The consensus has been that about 540 million years ago, during a period called the Cambrian Explosion, animals began to grow shells and exoskeletons and became the animals we know today. So hard-bodied animals must have originated from squishy animals. However, there is no fossil evidence of creatures without hard body parts. That is until a geologist and paleobiologist in northern Canada discovered a microstructure that is nearly 900 million years old. The structure appears to be a sponge that dates before the Cambrian explosion. Could this mean that animals have existed for nearly a billion years before today? If it pushes far enough back, could it prove that complex creatures have existed for as long as the Earth has existed? The Antikytheria Mechanism Amidst the sunken wreckage of a Greek cargo ship that is at least 2,000 years old was a bronze artifact with a maze of interlocking gears and mysterious characters etched all over its exposed faces, called the Antikytheria Mechanism. This discovery is so controversial because it is so sophisticated that some believe aliens had a hand in building it. It was originally thought to be a navigational astrolabe, but scientists keep uncovering new uses that tell us, at the very least, it was a highly sophisticated, intricate astronomical calendar. Crucifixion Nails have you ever wondered what happened to the nails used to nail Jesus to the cross? Well, they have been the subject of raging controversies for decades. The nails came from an unmarked box in the collection of a dead Israeli anthropologist named Niku Haas. Haas allegedly took the nails from a tomb he excavated in the 1970s, but there are no records that specify which tomb the nails came from. In 2011, a strange document came up suggesting that the nails came from the Hephaeus tomb. The tomb, where a priest involved in Jesus' crucifixion was buried. As the story goes, the priest felt so guilty that he kept the nails as a souvenir. There's no way to know if the nails are crucifixion nails, though scientists have found bits of wood and bone in them that could mean they are. The Tomb of Jesus The resting place of Jesus of Nazareth has had its fair share of controversy over the centuries. There are three tombs where he is supposedly buried, although after he was crucified, his body was placed in a tomb, and when they went to check on the body later, he was gone. So, which tomb is genuine, if any? There's the Talpiot family tomb, just outside the old city of Jerusalem. Discovered in 1980, the tomb contains 10 osseries with tombs bearing names such as Mary, Joseph, and Jesus. Mary Magdalene is also reportedly buried there next to Jesus, who many claim was her husband. Next is the Garden Tomb, which was the original spot believed to be Jesus' resting place. However, the source of this claim is unreliable. The guy even claimed that the Ark of the Covenant was found nearby but got stolen. Lastly, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. The church sits atop an ancient Jewish cemetery that dates back to the period when Jesus died, so he might have been buried there. 
However, there is no conclusive evidence to say where exactly Jesus was buried, if at all.